G'day fellas and welcome to another Beyond All Reason video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at what to do when things go wrong. Now of course every game you come into you've got a plan, you know in your head how you're going to play and what you're going to do, but sometimes you have to change the plan. We're going to be taking a look at what you can do to, to try and influence the outcome of the game because at the end of the day there's always going to be people on the team who've got jobs or have got roles and sometimes they don't want to perform them or they don't perform them well and it's your job to make sure that your team comes out victorious so that's what we're going to be looking at today of course uh, we'll start by introducing our our players so on our back line we've got personoic person personoic <laughs> uh we've got baluki i'm obviously up on the back line as well and we've got hoda uh, who's over in that corner on the front, we've got CH Mod 777. We've got Shagwa. <laughs> Great name right there. We've got Agrid. And we've got Storm K. So that's going to be our team in the north. Of course, we've got our, our weaker players on the front line. In, fra in fact, right in front of me. Uh, which means that my plan this game is to go eco uh, and to sell my lab. However, it might not be possible. It might not be possible because with uh, at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, uh, having people that are low on your team isn't uh, isn't necessarily a bad thing because your enemy is going to have people on their team who are who are low as well, uh, and it's your job to try and fill that space in because at the end of the day, you know, if you've got your two low players playing in this lane, then expect that lane to fall pretty early. But let's take a look over at the enemy side of the map and see. Introduce our players. So we've got Wyan up. Uh, we've got Killer KP. He's back. Uh, we got No Salty. And we've got Sand Colonia uh, over on that east side. Down in the back line, we've got Obsolete. Uh, great name. We've got Fog of War. We've got Russ. And we've got Few Burritos. I like that name, Few Burritos. Like, not one, not a lot of burritos, but a few burritos. There's, 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 a, there's multiple. We know that many. We know that much, rather. Now, one of the other things that you'll notice is that I've changed my opening on my build order. This is something that I learned, if I remember correctly, it was from Stardom. Uh, and basically what he does is he opens with wind turbines and then assists the bot lab. And then when he runs out of energy, instead of making wind turbines, he makes solars. And I was like, that's so smart, right? Like it just makes total sense because you're, you're, you're running out of energy. So you're stalling that out. So if you're making wind turbines, you're still stalling energy. I mean, it might not be to the extent that you're doing with the bot lab, but with solars... Well, that, it just changes everything. So that that's my opening that I've been going for now. I've been opening up with, with wind gen. So even though uh, you do get a more consistent opening going through the solars, I think you could be a bit more greedy and be, have a, a slightly higher efficiency uh, if you do go for that route. Uh, just re really, really uh, a, a nice opening. Uh, but in this game, I'm going to be playing as the arm. I've been going a little bit of a, a little bit of flexible. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm versatile in that I can play core and arm. I know some people like to play core only or arm only. My preference is probably arm. I like starting off with arm, but then getting a construction unit from the core. Um, I, I feel like the, the arm have just got so many great units that you can make, right? Like if we're talking about T2 units, I'm, I'm thinking about like your hound. It's it's a it's a uh, Sheldon, but it's really quick. Um, because it just outranges all of, all of the you know enemy T ones. Um, if if we're talking uh, you know if, if you want some some strong front line, then get your welders out. Uh, really potent back line in the sharpshooters as well. Not to mention that you've got marauders that are wonderful once you hit T three. And let's not even talk about the vehicles. Some of the best vehicles in the game uh, once you get those uh, those those tachyon lasers online. Uh, but anyway, we're we're still playing our standard greedy style here. We'll we'll change it so that we've just got our uh, our, our perspective on uh, so that you'll see that so we're going a little bit crazy here so I, I was throwing out quite a lot of wind turbines this game I said you know what uh, we, we managed to pick up a, a fair few rocks here so I said because we've got those extra rocks I'm just going to uh, I'm, I'm just going to start uh, throwing down a couple of extra wind turbines and that kind of insulates me against variable wind because you never really know how the wind is going to go. Some games you obviously get 16 all game, and some games it comes down to zero. So we want to make sure that in the event it does come down to zero, uh, that uh, that we're able to fix a little bit of a pause right there. Uh, so one of the enemy uh, players left the game, and one of the, the dangerous things about when your enemy leaves the game uh, is that it, it does also give over a, a player a secondary resource. And what's happened here is the lowest level player on the enemy team left the game and then gave it over to to russ here so now russ has got uh got two commanders 
Uh, and if you think about it, it's, it's, a, it's a it could be a pretty smart move if you've got your lowest level player and you give them that extra. I, I just realised we've got uh, we've got I think is it spectator chat on at the moment? I'm not sure, but we're 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 seeing a lot of the chat right now. I don't actually know how to turn off the in-game chat. If anybody knows how to do it, let me know. Maybe there's a widget for it that I could find. Uh, but anyway, command has gone boom boom over in the top side, uh, as as is normal, and we we do pull out the last bit of metal on him. Um, I, uh, this is something I've, I've been wanting to do. So basically, I want to start exploding up towards this position here. Uh, and then that way, I know that my, my commander will be safe. Because ideally, I want to resurrect my commander about the 16 to 17 minute mark. Uh, just so that you've always got your commander safe. So that if, a, you know, a, a, a Thor comes through and there's nothing else to protect you, cloak the commander, D-gun, easy. Uh, that, that's essentially it. Uh, but now, we do see that, that uh, our, our allies here... Uh, uh, providing out the T2, so Hoda has uh, is is going to be graciously sending out that medal uh, for the the or receiving that medal for the T2s and sending them out. So I said, you know what, we're just going to do our own thing here, and you can see Hoda's pretty quick up with the, with the T2 bot as well. Got a got a nice little base layout here already adding in the the third uh, the nano. That is that's pretty damn quick, but. Of course, we're, we're going to be doing our own thing. We've got our own plan in mind as to how we're going to get there. We've obviously got a lot of wind. In fact, let's compare the pair. Yeah, at the moment, you can see I'm sitting at about 100 more energy than him. So slightly safer on the energy front. I say safer. I mean, he's got advanced solar. So I'm not really going to say that that's uh, particularly unsafe. That's uh, probably one of the safest sources of energy that you can get. Uh, but uh, now going to be adding in the nanos and, and just playing our standard style. And we, we do reclaim the the, uh, the bot lab just simply because Shagwa's actually holding it down. Now, granted, he's not as far up as I'd like him to be. There's a couple of, you know, there's a couple of mexes out here that are still untaken. You can see that there's, in fact, quite an avenue uh, that has been left here. And this is where I kind of realized something. Now, one thing to note is I, I think I'm, I'm slowly learning this on, on glitters especially is we often consider the backline as like, you know, your sort of late game carry thing, right? If you played League of Legends, think of an ADC. Uh, if, if, you play, uh, if you play Dota 2, think of like Void, right? Or, or Anti-Mage, it's that sort of thing on the backline. You've got to wait all game for this guy to start to stop farming. And then when, when he finally stops farming, well, congratulations, he, he's out. Uh, but uh, essentially, I've got this theory, and it's, it's not theory, it's fact. Uh, take a look at the metal that you can actually get on the front line. So let, let's ride on board over on the other side. We'll take a look at Killer KP and see how he's got. So he's got one, two, three metal extractors, four, five, six metal extractors, seven, eight, nine metal extractors, 10, 11 metal extractors, 12 metal extractors. And this one right here is a double banger. So that's technically 13, 14 metal extractors right there. This man has got 14 metal extractors. I've got six. I've got six. So he's got more than twice the amount of metal income that I do off metal extractors. Now, granted, I've got things like energy converters and I've got the safety uh, of, of the back line in that I don't have to worry about my, my front line failing. But that's a lot of accessible metal. And it means that he can, if he can hold the front, he can convert that into a huge economy behind this. Because as you can see, I'm, I'm still doing my best right now to, to work towards fusion. And then I'm going to have to go and, and, and like, let's, let's if, if you were to extrapolate on that idea, okay? And we've got our, our advanced metal extractors coming in now. Now, just, just remember that he's going to have his T2 coming in, sh in shortly. As long as he's got an ally who's going to be able to provide the T2. And look, speaking of providing the T2, look at this service coming out from Hoda. Throwing out the... Uh, got got the, the Hercules out here uh, and providing a bit of assistance. Uh, but es essentially, uh, I think there's a world where you could go frontline, but you're actually the eco player. And we we've seen that before, obviously. We've seen carrying from the frontline. But I, I think that's definitely something that I am yet to discover. So I'm going to be looking to do that in the next couple of days. Learn to really master the frontline, because that's something that I, I try to utilize here. And you can hear that uh, I've turned up the, the volume a little bit too much. So our timing comes in for our fusion. A little bit late here, uh, a little bit shy of nine minutes. Obviously, the, the good old days of getting it at seven minutes and 40 seconds are uh, well past us now that the commander has been nerfed. So it does slow down our timings a little bit, but not a huge amount. And of course, throwing down just our basic energy converters. We want to make sure that all of that metal that we utilize is going to be going into our Aphis. But wait, there's a push. Killer KP, the best player on the enemy team, has come towards the enemy with two commanders. Now granted, looks like most of the units have gone down, but as you can see, there is a gaping wide hole in the middle of the map. And I take that as an invitation. I say, you know what? I've got my fusion up 
at this point, I'm going to take the foot off the pedal. And this is where it comes back to, you're in the back line, you've got your job, right? Like, I declared early on, hey guys, I'm eco, you know, that that's it. And yeah, I could stop after my first APHIS, I could stop after my, my second APHIS or my 10th APHIS, but I've decided now is the time to go because there is an imminent threat coming down upon us and I'm not confident that we're going to be able to hold it especially considering it's their their team's best player which means their micro is going to be quite good as well they're going to know what targets to hit for they're going to be looking for those metal extractors and you can see this avenue is still open here towards the middle so I say that you know what if we're going to clean this up we're just going to do it we're just going to get straight out there so I'm I bring my advanced construction bot and I say we're just going to go the whole way down we're going to come down here uh, and we're going to start taking all of all of the metal that's out there and, and look to try and utilize that. Now, keep in mind this whole time. I mean, can we actually check the statistics? Let's have a look. If, if I change the player view, I want to compare. All right, so I'm on 18.5k metal. So technically the top of the, the top right now. But I've got a sneaky suspicion if Killer KP went for T2 a bit sooner, he would be absolutely destroying me right now. I mean, because you, you get two advanced constructions bots out right the first one stays in the base and go goes for one two three maxes and you know it does does all, all the maxes that you've got and then it goes for a fusion and then the other one gets accompanied by a couple of butlers and goes onto the front line so we're gonna have to explore that idea i i do like that idea a lot so who knows maybe maybe i'm gonna be switching over to a, a more of a frontline orientation and it, it's somewhat ironic in that i'm gonna be playing frontline because i'll have access to more resources on the front line <laughs> so that i can carry harder from the front line but big push gonna be coming in right now russ just gonna be throwing everything at the wall you can see there's a gauntlet in there trying to stay alive or rather an agitator trying to trying to stay alive but on the back line the wardens should be able to hold on, and indeed they do. We can see the artillery is coming out, but now we're going to be moving out with our hounds and looking to try and help out on this front line. Meanwhile, we're just pushing in. And you know what? Like, my ally here... I, I, look, I don't want to disparage him, but I saw his one, uh, one, one true skill rating, and I said, look, it's probably going to be like another 10 minutes before he replaces this metal extractor. So I'm just going to take it for now, and when he notices it, I'll give it to him. Uh, but actually later on in this game, I did see that he had reclaimed it and then built his own there. So he didn't say anything to me, but I, I would have given it to him. But, you know, it's, it's that you, you got to take what you can get, right? And at the end of the day, if some, if your ally's not utilizing these resources, I think it's your obligation to make sure that you're u utilizing them as well. Because, be, yeah, you want to win, right? You want to win. So Shiago has done a pretty good job holding the front. Honestly, I'm, I'm impressed with the hold. Uh, the, the fact that he's got the agitator up, I, I see a lot of lower level players going for an agitator or a... Um, what they used to be called Punishers or Guardians uh, back in the day. And they wouldn't have a whole bunch of static defense here. And I feel like that's quite a mistake. I think before you go for the Agitator, you've got to have at the very least like a Warden and a couple of Twin Guards or Light Laser Turrets uh, to help you defend uh, against that. But you can see that there's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a dampening on the front. Not a particularly uh, large battle anymore. Uh, and now all of a sudden there's another push coming in. But I'm thinking about taking the foot off the pedal. You can see that the, the number of units out now aren't the best. Uh, and we've got some Archangels coming out. Uh, so th this is, at this point, uh, there, there's some point uh, in, in the game where I'm like, w we need air. Like, we, we definitely need air. There needs to be a presence of air because uh, we, we can actually see the enemy's got air. And that occasionally comes into radar. And whenever you see that the enemy's got air, you need to be very cognizant of that uh, and, and look to try and have anti-air. Um, you can even see Killer KP saying, stop doing that. You're just feeding him so much metal. Uh, and uh, you'll see right now that on our front line, we've now got some res bots that have come up. So we specifically made uh, we made this bot lab. Uh, now, I wasn't getting my Lazarus out fast enough here. Uh, so I said, you know what? Uh, let's let's get a couple of construction bots out and then we'll, we'll get the Lazarus out. But we're looking to push down. And basically, I, I'm looking to capture this reclaim field. I really want this reclaim field. And to get this, I'm going to need to take out the wardens here. We, you can see that we uh, th there was actually a uh, an agitator down here, but we've, we've already taken that one out as well. And uh, the idea is that we just want to push up. We want to force back our enemy so that we can get this reclaim. Because if, if we lose these Lazarus, then obviously we lose a huge amount of our, our metal income. And that's really what it, what it comes about. And you can see right there, Gat Gun is going to unfortunately send those guys to the Shadow, the shadow Realm. But let's check back in on the base. So back towards the main base. This is where we're finally deciding, okay, you know, we've added the advanced construction bot into the front of the queue, and this is going to allow us uh, to go into fusion. Now, you might be thinking, all right, well, it's time to get back on, on the APHIS train. You know, we were planning on throwing down the APHIS right here. I had the blueprint already. 
but it's not. It's time to go for more fusions. Remember, we, we take that lesson that we learned from Stardom's game and we say, okay, well, we're making units, so we want to make sure that we've got fusion that is that is coming up. We don't want Aphis. If we go for Aphis, look at the, the, the time that it takes to build these, right? You've got 9,700 metal versus 4,300 metal. It's more than double the cost. So it's going to take a really long time. Not to mention that the build time, I feel like the Aphis is just so much longer. Like I, I would I would estimate probably three to four times longer uh, than a fusion. So it's a, a significant difference uh, there. So if you've got the metal for it, it definitely makes sense to go into fusion early. And I think when you're playing this kind of, uh, th this sort of pseudo frontline role, uh, that you've got plenty of metal. I mean, I've got, I've got Reclaim, you can see right now. Uh, no salty saying, Sentry is gone. He hit T2 first. Indeed, I did. And t indeed, I did. And we're going to manage to pick up the commander, uh, get him for free. Uh, but there's some pretty good coverage that comes in right now uh, from Killer KP. You can see him bringing all of those units over. You've got to be careful not, not to be caught out of position. Uh, we do have a, a, a fair few uh, units in here that are quite slow. We have the Archangels. I think we've already lost our radar and our jammer. Uh, so we're probably going to need to replace those guys. Uh, I, I like to have only one of them out and of, of each and then just make sure I've, I'm careful with my control. But unfortunately, the Archangel going to be losing his life. Poor little guy. Uh, and now it really becomes about fighting over this reclaim field. We, we need to have this reclaim field. Uh, I'm not paying attention to the hounds. And unfortunately, we get sandwiched between a... a I was going to say a rock and a hard place, but it's more just like two hard places. Uh, because, uh, yeah, pretty pretty decent size force here. So we lose a lot of hounds in, in that fight. But for, fortunately, we got Shagwa there backing us up. A whole bunch of storms out here. Wait, aggravate? Are they called aggravators? We've got aggravators and agitators. Damn, man. There is... Oh! I didn't even realize the com goes down on the front. Takes out a huge amount of tanks. But this will give us a good opportunity to, to, to pick up plenty of those... Uh, plenty of that metal. And you can, you can see right there exactly how much metal we're talking about. That's why this reclaim field is so important. 9.4k. Uh, and so we've got more construction bots back here now. Just a little bit of extra build power. You can see these guys have got 80 each compared to the 100 build power of the, of the bot lab. So we're just going to start pumping out those Lazarus and continue moving down uh, on, onto that front line. Um, and, and looking to pick them up. I've also got them uh, automatically assigning into a control group. So if you're not already doing this, make sure that you're you're doing this. And, and to do that, I'm, a, I'm on the grid hotkeys. So the way that it works is I click on my unit and I press Alt-1. And what that's going to do is it's going to add every single hound into the, the one control group. Even when they're brand new, even when they come straight out, they immediately get added to that control group. So with my Lazarus, I put them onto Alt-3. So control group 3. And all of my Lazarus uh, join that control group. So I, it's very easy for me to control them, to pull them back, or in this case, uh, let them die. Uh, it is a sad state of affairs, but it looks like we're, we're going to be making a little bit of a breakthrough. But back towards the base, you can see we've got that second fusion up now. We're going to be going for some advanced energy converters, and we just want to continue going into the uh, going going into the fusions at this point. Uh, we're, we're still making plenty of units now. The enemy's starting to get some hounds out, and we're looking to try and do damage here. Uh, looking down towards that frontline player, hoping to pick up Maybe, maybe some fusion. But we do spot out that lab on the front line. Obviously, a lot of metal in here. You got to think about it, right? Like you're paying 3k metal for, for a lab like this, and once it gets lost, I mean, let, let's uh, can we can we see how much it costs? I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's probably about that, but it goes down to 1700 metal, so he can reclaim it, or he's got to spend the time uh, rejuvenating it. What's it, what's it called? Re <laughs> resurrecting it, rejuvenating it, like it's like it's a uh, skin on the on the face. We rejuvenate the lab <laughs> to its its formal form. Uh, but anyway, back towards our, our main base. We're, we're just doing standard eco things. You can see that our metal has gone absolutely crazy. We've just reclaimed all the things down here. Uh, we, we've lost a fair few of our, uh, our Lazarus. You can see them coming out now. We've, we've got five more, and we're coming out over onto this part, but obviously the enemy's still defending this reclaim field quite well. So some really big reclaim in here. Uh, so it, it's always important to fight over it. And I, I love the dynamic nature of, of these reclaim fields as they change as the enemy eats them as well. It kind of gives you an indication on what you can work towards. But just remember that the Lazarus is very, very cheap, right? Like you're, you're talking about a unit that costs 110 metal. This guy will give you 110 metal if he's sucking it up in like two seconds. So even if they die, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. As long as you're replacing them, I think it's quite important. Because when you when you suck up that metal, you're denying it from your enemy. That's another key factor to remember. But pretty decent sized push coming in now. A lot of air uh, present. And uh, this is something that, that I call out. Because our air player, at least our person who, who w was going air, or at least we saw had the aircraft plant, is not making any air. And, and th that was definitely a cause for concern for me. Because now all of a sudden, you've got a big, a big push that is happening. 
Uh, and this is accompanied by air, and there's no immediate way to deal with this. And you can see I threw down a Mercury on the front line, but it was just a little bit too late. Uh, it felt probably about 30 seconds too late had I had this up a bit sooner, because uh, we would have been able to get some uh, to get some flackers up as well. You can see me saying, we need anti-air, please. We need it. And th this is the thing where it's like, I can go for anti-air uh, in, the, in the form of fighters, but then it's going to detract from the front line, right? Like, I'm, I'm already dealing with like a, a two to three player push right now trying to hold on i can make fighters sure but then we're going to lose on the front so you know I, I do my best i get some archangels out but even then you know they're slow they're not really mobile uh, it, it's it's going to be difficult trying to to keep up with the enemy air especially if they start looking to target back lines um so th this is where it's just like and then you can see me type, typing in the chat, Hoda, you're fucking 28 TS, mate. Mate, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> this is the classic uh, classic Australian nature of me coming out here. A little bit frustrated. I mean, Hoda's having a great time. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're, we're having a good boom back here. We're 20 minutes in. We've got our two Aphises down. And he, he's having a lovely day. Uh, but the reality is, is we, we do need... Uh, we do need that anti-air uh, that, that he, he was... Uh, he was to be going, but never mind. It's okay. We, we managed to... We managed to hold a little bit longer, and he is fortunately making the, that aircraft. Uh, but uh, now, going to continue to, to push forward at that point. Oh, gosh. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like it, it, you try your best to keep your cool, but it's like it, it's only it, you've been asking for it for, you know, five minutes, ten minutes, that sort of thing, and it's still not happening. And it's like, mate, all you're doing is making Aphus. I mean, he's not, he's not, I mean, I, I feel like I'm talking to myself a week ago. <laughs> it's like we're dying out here. Oh gosh. To be a frontliner. I, I, we've gone cir full circle now. I, I mean, I've gone from like the, the, uh, the, the backliner who just ignores everybody to the toxic frontliner that's uh, abusing the backline. Like, make units, you're terrible. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Anyway, Hounds are still going to be pushing up here. Once again, huge, huge uh, metal field up here. Let's have a look and see if we can get some numbers on that. Just a cool 13,000 metal. Now, this is a widget uh, that I've got. If you haven't already, make sure you download it. Uh, if you press F11 on your keyboard, you can go to your widget selector. Uh, so I've got a whole bunch of uh, widgets that I like to use. So I like to use build power radius. Uh, I got priority construction turrets and reclaim field highlight. Uh, priority construction turrets is really cool. So basically, you've got all, all your construction turrets, right? And let's say that they're, they're building an APHIS. And then you say, okay, I, I want to build more construction turrets. What they're going to do, instead of building that APHIS, they'll interrupt themselves and they'll be like, hey, there's a construction turret down. I'm going to go and assist that instead. And so basically, you can, it just allows you to put all these construction turrets down really quickly. Uh, so that's, that's, a, that's a great little one to have as well. I love that one. I've also got the, the build power uh, radius, just simply because... The, the build power circle is very faint uh, if you don't have the mod. So this this just pushes it up uh, to 100% opacity uh, rather than like the 15% the opacity that it, it's on as standard. And it helps out with the commander in the early game. So you know where to, uh, you know where to, to put your buildings down early on. So now looking to, to rebuild, uh, rebuild, uh, I guess, the, the, the front line. We lost a lot there. We lost a lot of advanced metal extractors. You can, did I say extractors? Extractors. You can see that we've lost one, two, three, four uh, on the front line. I think we, we may have been holding this one. Not 100% sure on that one, uh, but we, we definitely lost at least... Uh, oh, and, and take this one back here as well. This is five as well, which we're resurrecting. Of course, I, I was going to go reclaim them, and I'm like, wait, I could just resurrect these bad boys. So, yeah, it, it makes a lot more sense to just do that. Uh, and uh, sometime, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. And today, it was a, it was a time that we, we lost them. Uh, but uh, it, it's all right. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. You know what? Like, w I should definitely. Okay. Note to self: pay more attention to resurrecting, because I, I would love this Mercury would be amazing to have right now. You know, like a, a little bit more pressure on the front line starts working down all these units on the side. They've got such great range and such great coverage. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely something to, to keep in mind. But a huge push now coming in over on that west side. You can see that Killer P uh, is going to be looking to, to push in. The, these tanks almost look pink. It's interesting how they got those little decals on the front that look pink. They are blue. They're blue tanks, uh, but they, they're pink looking. So the uh, yeah, the tiger's going to be coming through now, much faster than their Goliath counterparts. The uh, yeah, the ti tiger, a very very solid tank, but Storm K going to be in a little bit of trouble here, unless he's able to to keep up with that. 
And this is where, I think this is, yeah, we've started to transition now. So now we kind of reached this mid-game composition time where there is the risk of T3. And the best way to deal with T3, uh, if you've got time to do it, in my opinion, it's to go for sharpshooters. I think these guys are, are really good. Uh, they can fire while retreating. Um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility in the way that you control them and also gives, gives incredible range. You can see how far that they're firing at the moment. So really big uh, range. Not quite as big as the... Um, uh, not, not quite as long a range as the uh, the vehicle counterpart, but still pretty damn long. So I'm, I'm a big fan of it. The vehicle counterpart is quite... It feels not slow, but the turning circle on it is, is, is a very low turning circle. So if you do need to retreat, it makes it quite difficult. Over towards this, this west side, though, it looks like the cleanup did manage to come through. And we're going to send all of our Lazarus out. You can see now there is... Uh, there's some big fields out here. 6.7k. Uh, and a 1.5k. So we're just making sure that we're mobile with them. And you can see we've got like, we've got 26 of these bad boys out here. They're just collecting metal for us this entire game. It's, it, it really makes it uh, a lot more, uh, it allows you to have a lot more flexibility uh, when, when you're doing this. Uh, but back home, we've added in the third fusion now. To be honest, we're quite slow on our fusions. We're only at four fusions at 25 minutes. We should probably be quite a few more than that. Uh, especially considering, I mean, Hoda's just been Holding, holding it down right now. Uh, has got plenty of T2 out on the front now, so should be able to hold that down. But we're looking for that win condition. We're, we're trying to find the way to win. Because at the end of the day, even if you're able to hold the mid, it's about being able to push back the mid. And that's that's what we're we're looking to, to try and do. We want to try and push into the, the, onto the enemy side. Uh, so now this is where we start adding in our welders. Welders are really tanky. Wonderful units, very effective crowd control as well. So if the enemy's got lots of T1 spam, uh, they, they're quite effective at dealing with that. Uh, and, and just an overall really solid unit. But once again, we see all this air coming out and Hoda, for whatever reason, is just, you know, only making bobbers. I, I, I think I'm still like really, really uh, frustrated, but I'm just like, you know what? Effort, man. Like, I, I'm just going to put down Arbalists everywhere. I'm just going to put Mercuries everywhere. It's like, this guy is not making T2 air. And the thing is like, yeah, I could make T2 air, sure. I mean, I, I've been holding this lane down for, what, the last 15 minutes? And, you know, I, I, all of my resources are invested into holding this lane down. There, there's still a part of me which is like, we, we could definitely switch into air. Uh, but the, the, I, my fear is that if we do it, we're up against the blue player, right? And let's take a look at the economies right now, because I'm sure Killer P's economy is, is just miles ahead of ours. Let's take a look. It's actually not. It's, it's not. He's sitting on 2k energy and 68 metal. So it hasn't scaled that effectively. And he did have the second commander, even though he didn't didn't pick it up from... from. Bro, these are so bright, aren't they? Look at them sitting in the base. They're, they're, they're like... They're like glowing. They're just... Respect, dude. Respect. You know, if, if ever I... um, <laughs> if, if ever I get knocked out, I just build a whole bunch of these with like my leftover commander or con. Uh, it's like, oh, well, that's it. Uh, but... Any, anyway, uh, Killer P. Oh, is it Killer P? No, it's, it's actually Purple who's on air. Oh, okay, yeah. So th th this is where it, like, it comes in. Okay, so you can see. Th there's no way that we'd be able to keep up on air. So I, I could switch into air at this point. But as, as you can see, there's no point for me to switch into air because I will just be outnumbered and outgunned so quickly. Fewest, few burritos has just gone absolutely crazy with the production, with the boom back here. Massive amount of APHIS on the back line. So that needs to be matched. And that's partly why, why your, your eco player is often uh, going to be going for your air as well. Uh, especially towards those, those ultra late game situations. Uh, but let's ride back on board with yours truly. And see how we're doing it. Looks like, they, they look like nukes, man. The way that they glow, but it looks like it's the ambassadors. No, the negotiators. The diplomats. They used to be called them in the Merle. Oh gosh, the Merle. You know, I never knew, with the Merle, my dad and I, we, we always used to, we used to play together and we didn't know the Merle existed because the Merle was on the second page of the advanced vehicle lab and we didn't know it had a second page. We, we knew everything else had second pages, but we didn't even realize that that had a second page. And we, it wasn't until we played a LAN, I'm not kidding you, back when I was like 11 years old, I played a LAN with my neighbor. We ran, we, we had an ethernet cord going across the fence and we were playing on this map. It was like, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like, it's lava and there's four corners and in the middle, all of the corners meet and there's lava on the outside uh, and there's lots of metal on the inside. And basically he had Merle's and we're like, what the hell is this red rocket that's coming in right now? And it was Merle's. And then I remember talking on my, on the phone to my dad, like, and he, he said, oh, Drongo, 
I found it. I, I, I found that unit that he was making. He wouldn't, because he wouldn't tell us about it. He wouldn't tell us what the unit was or like, uh, or how to get it. And so we were confused. But eventually, uh, my dad found it out like a, a couple of days later. He's like, I, I, I worked it out. Yeah, there's a second page for the advanced vehicle lab. And I was like, no way, that's crazy. And I think I must have come over to his place that because for anybody who doesn't know I'm, I'm on the phone to my dad because my parents are divorced and I, i'd spend all of my time at my mum's and i'd get to spend a couple of days at my dad's on the uh every fortnight uh and and they, they were obviously the weekends that i look forward to most getting to play total annihilation with my dad for 20 hours a weekend that, that was that was good fun let me say that much but uh yeah that was uh, you know what i've even i've got a tear in my eye right now i'm not sure if it's because if it's i got a sore throat or because i'm having so much fun talking <laughs> talking about the good old days but anyway let's get back to the action it's enough about me we got me saying make more fighters please we need a wall please and hoda saying chill chill just chill mate i'll i'll i'll, I'll chill when we've got fighters you could we've, we, so the reason why I, i'm not chilling is because we know that the enemy's got a whole bunch of fighters and at any point they can just switch to bombers and you imagine all of this build power getting thrown into bombers in, in and, and there you go there, there's the bombers coming out right now uh it looks like he's going a mix of gunships and bombers so a little bit of a mistake should be just be going the mass bombers and looking for that run by um but uh yeah you, you could be talking 150 bombers in, in the space of three four minutes very very easily so always always important to to be cognizant of how quickly an anti-air wall can become a bombing raid Let's check back over towards the, the top side of the map. So we're just adding in more Aphises. We're continuing to scale. We're just, we're just pumping out sharpshooters at this point because we've obviously seen T3 uh, from our enemy. You can see that there's a Thor uh, back here that we, we've been able to track it for the moment. And that's our biggest threat. So we're just making sure that we are covering that. Uh, continuing to, to build up on that front line, you can see that we've got a whole bunch of butlers out here helping out with our construction, an advanced construction bot. Just making sure that we, we get things done very quickly. Remember, these guys have got a lot of build power, 140 build power. Uh, so we, we're trying our best to just keep pushing forward with the Mercuries. The idea is that you want to slowly push them forward to push that wall back from the enemy. The Mercuries are very, very strong. Uh, and if you can get a couple of them sitting up the front, like look look how far back these, these Mercuries are able to fire. So this is a pretty big threat for the enemy. And quite important that they, they look to, to take them out. But... Uh, back towards that that base we're, we're continuing our boom at this point not a whole lot of production or not a, a lot of uh, a whole lot of nanos at this point uh, but we are still just mainly focused on getting out our sharpshooters and at, at this point i very much fulfilled the role of the front line uh, obviously we still have our front liners but I, i've tried my best to to fill that gap and you can see that we've we've taken quite a few advanced metal extractors at this point we we are sitting on one two three four five six oh my lord why i don't know why it moved that quickly one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, and we've got plenty back here. Let's have a look and see. He, he, he's upgraded the, this one as well. So you can see he reclaimed it. And then he uh, and th then he built his own one. Uh, which, you know, I, I respect. He could have asked for it. I would have given it to him quite happily. Uh, but uh, maybe he didn't. I just didn't see it. So we've got a whole bunch of sharpshooters pushing towards the front. And battle mechs have finally made it through over on the west side. So it looks like one of our back lines has come online. It's going to be Baluki uh, who's come online. And if he managed to, manages to hit that Aphis, it's going to be all over Red Rover. Indeed, he is focusing it down and moving everybody in. And that is going to be it. You can see all of those, all of that base going down. Kill of KP moving over to cover as well. How many more? Oh my God, if he gets through to this back line, that is that, that would explain why the game would be finishing very quickly so uh, at this point what needs to happen is you need to be throwing out stilettos and trying to bomb this down you can see he's actually doing a pretty decent job of managing to get it down but if he hits one and he does and it all goes up in the blink of an eye oh you just needed that one stiletto out and it would have changed everything this is why you can't be making those t1 gunships sir they just don't they don't do enough justice to these units and the battle mech on 155 health now looking to try and take out the aphis is he gonna do <laughs> he gets it Oh, it's beautiful stuff. And you can see Fuberitos just typing in GG. Indeed, my friend. That is it. Meanwhile, on the front, we've got Thors that are trying their best to push through. But we've just got the sharpshooters on the back line. Just remember that. The sharpshooters are going to be able to continue kiting their way back. And the Thors, they'll, they'll slowly push forward. They've got... How much speed have they got? 54. Compare that to the sharpshooter. Sharpshooter with a speed of 33. Much slower than the Thor, but they do have that ability to kite quite some time. You can always split them off as well into into different angles. And you can see that that push is really coming in now. 
this is this is the trouble when you go for these uh when the when you go for the starlights is they're not able to fire on the defensive whereas the sharpshooters are able to do that so he's going to be able to clean up all of the of the starlights but the sharpshooters will be absolutely fine and able to defend in that position so that's part of the reason why I, i'm pretty sure that they, these guys need to be sitting still to fire or facing forward it's one of the two maybe i'm wrong about that though I, I haven't used vehicles enough yet to know. They're really good when you're winning the Starlight, but if you're not winning the fight, it's it's not the strongest. You can see Pers Personic coming out as well, looking for that D-Gun. Not going to find it. And that's going to be all she wrote. I mean, at this point, there's no real way that you're coming back into this game. You've lost your your, your big backline eco. Obviously, a few burritos boomed like an absolute madman this game. And finally, we do have that presence of fighters out on the field. What do we got right now? We got Valiance? Really? You're making, <laughs> you're making Valiance? All right, Hoda. I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're from, but I'm I'm I am once again requesting T2 Air, please, for the last time. Can we have some T2 fighters in the house? We we were one bombing run away from death. I will say that much. You know, th this could have very easily been a death by air game. It wasn't, but it could have been. And more big kablooms go down on the back line. That's going to be all she wrote. And speaking of air raids. Hoda coming in. The bomber, look at the bombers. I didn't even know they, they could do that. that. That is one flexible bomber. Up towards that top side. We, we've, we've finally gone into T3 at 35 minutes. Uh, compare that to like the, the T3 of... Uh, compare that to the T3 of... Uh, of uh, stardom who, who made t3 at 20 minutes dude uh it is it is a stark difference so definitely i need to i need to get my my macro my micro on board you can even see no salty saying oh wait is that is that is that drongo the drongo whoa and uh i guess he might be surprised to see himself in in the videos because he's what he watches the vid i said me too i, I watch them all before i post them you know what it, it's one of those weird things when when you become a content creator often you, you make the content that you want to watch and then you get into this problem where like you watch your own content and it takes a lot of your time up man i, I spend time watching my own videos but anyway that's going to be it ladies and gentlemen hoda produces the most resources in the end let's take a look uh, quickly at some of those stats i want to have a look at them uh so we can see in the end uh, we, uh, Hoda was, was pumping absolutely crazy up to 362k medal, 248k, uh, or 246k for, for me on the medal, uh, and 20 million energy. So a significantly greater amount of energy. You can see we're relatively close on the medal, and that's largely just because we pushed out and started taking all of these advanced metal extractors. So I think there's definitely something to it. So I'm going to look to try and play frontline a little bit more. Let's have a look at the graphs. Take a look at the medal produced. You can see that uh, that Hoda has got a beautiful curve on that, and then uh, let's have a look at the energy produced. It's uh, it's 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 wonderful stuff, and you can see that him and uh, and burritos were were quite neck and neck until that obviously got taken out, and you can see how fast he escapes. This is part of the reason why when you lose your economy, that it's very hard to come back because your enemy is just going the whole time full throttle. Anyway, that's gonna be it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and of course, if you've got any questions, any feedback, anything at all, leave it down in the comments, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.